Yes, robots that can help paraplegics walk. This was one of the things that was announced at the recent Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. It's an exoskeleton. Have a look at this. What it actually does is it powers walking for somebody that doesn't have uh, the ability to use their legs. In the case of the robotic exoskeleton, the ones for the military and, and the ones for medical, uh, there are also motors and, and actuators that uh, detect how much strength an individual can put into a particular uh, step or movement and augments it with uh, as much as zero to 100% uh, power. Right, now we are here in the studio with technology journalist Claire Porter and Alex Kidman from fatducktech.com. Alex, what are the sorts of examples where this sort of technology, exoskeleton technology, can be used even outside of disabilities? You could use it in all sorts of health areas associated with that. Things for, as simple as surgery where you need you know, a really mechanically precise kind of cut but you still want human guidance for it. Or physical therapy. Or even things like sports training. If you think about most martial arts, an awful lot of that is muscle memory but it's knowing how to do the kick or the punch right. So, you know, the, the typical images of a gym full of kids all, you know, punching forward 50,000 times because that's the way they learn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you could get, you know, an expert martial artist to input that kind of stuff so they could train people, you've I've got, got options and possibilities image there. image of robot Mr. Miyagi in my head. Well, this is the point <laughs> where you awesome. get the grab from the Matrix that goes, I know Tai Chi. I know Tai Chi. Exactly. <laughs> What about you, Claire? Where would you like to see it used? Well, certainly I think it's got certain military applications, particularly for if you're working in areas such as bomb diffusion or even um, just needing to get into to tight spaces that require certain kind of movements. Um, just turning everyone into a potential Iron Man. <laughs> Seriously, I, like I would a, wear that to just work, just to be cool. We could have set like an egg timer on the amount of time it would take us to talk about Iron Man in this conversation. <laughs> See, I had a Doctor Who Cyberman reference in the back uh, of my head. Oh. Because that's the, that's the dark side of that technology. First you put on the exoskeleton, then the exoskeleton wears you. Exactly. If you were the sort of person that was in the centre of one of these devices, what are the sorts of safety mechanisms that you as a user would want there to be? Because as you say, there is, you know, you, we have this very sci-fi image of where it could horribly go wrong. What are the sorts of things you as a user would like to have that stops that? Okay, well, I suppose the, the really obvious stuff is proper recognition of the muscular limits of a human being. A motor could flip my arm around 300 times and then tear it out of its socket without realising it because it's just a motor. And actually having that recognition of what an individual human being, and we're all a little bit different, we're all a little bit different in height or flexibility, age, all of these factors need to be taken into account because the potential for this stuff is brilliant, but the potential for accidental small-scale injury or even repetitive injury where it's forcing you to do something that perhaps doesn't break something but isn't comfortable but is in fact you know, tearing a muscle quietly, that's a big problem. Proper power management. Especially if you're talking about someone who has no other form of motion control, that kind of disability, you don't want to put on your put on your exoskeleton in the morning, go out to the shops, walk halfway back, and then suddenly discover that the little red light is blinking and you are stuck somewhere with no way of moving. So you, range anxiety, I guess, is where what it comes in. What if it stalls on you and you're like walking <laughs> across the street? What if it runs on windows and you get like the blue screen of death somewhere and you're like, I just, I can't. <laughs> What are the other interesting things being done in exoskeletons that stand out to you guys? Google Labs and DARPA were doing some pretty uh, terrifying slash fascinating experiments with exoskeleton in its labs, I think, in 2013 or I mean, maybe Terrifying last year. slash fascinating is almost like their tagline at I mean, DARPA. <laughs> have you seen the spider dog? Can you imagine if that fit is like an exoskeleton? For all intents and purposes, it had like the movements and like I guess you can call it the temperament of a dog, but it had eight freaking legs on it and it crawled like a crab. It mainly seemed to have terrifying military implications. There's a uh, company called Cyberdyne, which is worrying of to begin with. In Japan. Oh no, this gets better. In oh, Japan, God. which has uh, medical exoskeleton stuff. And this stuff's been ISO certified, so it's safe, except that they decided to call it HAL. What? Oh God! <laughs> Do these people have no sense of irony? So Cyberdyne was from uh, Ter Terminator. From Terminator. What fascinates me about this is there's an awful lot of experimental research. This is stuff they're using in Japanese hospitals. This is stuff that you can hire as a medical practitioner for all sorts of therapy work. What fascinates me is, like the demonstration at CES, the stuff that is actually getting out there now, that is being done now, because that's the stuff that's more likely to then get built upon. You get the version 2, you get the version 3, and, you know, by the version 6, they're trying to kill us all. <laughs> Has anyone here seen S.H.I.E.L.D.? 
Uh, the TV yeah. show. Yeah. So we're already seeing like the fictional implications <laughs> of exoskeletons <laughs> whereby you can graft an exoskeleton onto a body part and it can rebuild the muscle for you and you can just become immortal. I mean, that's the logical end point of this, right? Where you can just like rebuild your own... It always comes back to super soldiers with this show. I feel like well, there is... Course. It goes Facebook, porn, super soldiers. <laughs> Every week. And Grinder. Let's and not grinder, forget Grinder. of course. All right, thank you, guys. Uh, we do have an interview with the team behind Exobionics. That is on the podcast for the show, which you can find on any great podcasting app, uh, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and, of course, on the RN website. Plus, as always, you should be subscribing to the RN YouTube channel. There's tons of great stuff, and I'm quietly confident there's a subscribe button on this screen around me somewhere that you should hit. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.